Hey, welcome again everybody. So uh, today I want to make a little video about um, using AI to program a microcontroller. So this is a little uh, Seed Studio ESP32C6 little microcontroller. You get many microcontrollers. But I've loaded uh, CircuitPython on here. And I have a video on that's like two minutes and you've got CircuitPython on here. Very simple. And uh, um, I've connected to it uh, this little LED type display, um, which is connected via I2C. So it really is just, um, uh, or I squared C or, or whatever. It's got 3.3 volts ground and then two pins, the SDA and SD, SDA, SEL. Yep, uh, uh, two, two pins going in there, so it's four pins on here. So uh, I have this little display connected to this C32, uh, ESP32C6. And uh, now let me try and um, use AI to write something to display on the screen. So I'm going to purely use AI here um, just to show its capabilities. There's obviously a lot more that it can do. But let me try and write something to display something on this display. Actually, I'm going to take that little uh, protector off there. So there it is. Let me try that quickly and, and see um, on the PC what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, here I am just on the Amazon site to show you. I've got this is the little ESP32C6. Um, if you buy them in bulk, they get much cheaper, you know, but uh, that's 10 bucks. And then... Uh, I've got this little display, which is a um, OLED connected via I2C or I squared C, whatever, and that's $6.99. But again, you can get them cheaper than that if you buy them in bulk or whatever. So those are the two things that I have, the controller and um, the little uh, chip, uh, the, the little display. So... Um, and they show you all the diagrams, how to connect that. Very simple. Okay, now let's get into the AI part. Okay, let's um, first set up, uh, make sure this thing is uh, available in Thorny. So um, I'm connecting the ESP32C6 via serial to my uh, Thorny on the screen over here. I'll hit stop. And you'll see that, um, you know, it's uh, circuit point Python 922. Um, I have nothing in the code uh, .py file. There's the boot. We can see it's an ESP32C6, 512 uh, RAM. Um, and uh, I have nothing in settings. So I don't I really have anything. The only thing that I added here was I added, there's a placeholder here for SD, that's it, and, but I added two libraries, um, and it's this SSD1306 uh, a library. Actually, it's only one library. I, uh, oh, and um, uh, two. There's display text and um, SSD1306. Now, those I can show you. How to, uh, I'll put links on how to get them. You basically install them and just drag them into lib over here, and those are available from Adafruit. Okay, so it's a driver and a, a display text. Okay, so I have that. So um, let me uh, jump over then to uh, the AI itself. Okay, so I'm gonna, so we know it's ready, everything's good here. So um, I use a AI here called codemate.ai, but really any AI can, can do this. Um, it's not specific to them. I just like this one. So I'm going to go into a chat over here with AI and I'm going to say um, I have a ESP32C6 uh, with a SSD1306. So I have a ESP32 uh, ESP uh, <laughs> 32C6 with a SSD1306 OLED display connected via uh, I2C, IC squared. 
<coughs> I have loaded circuit oop, Python, and I'm just shooting from a hippie. I, I hope this works. Circuit Python 9 onto the ESP32 C6, and it is ready. Can you create a, an, oops, an circuit Python application that, man, if I could only spell, that dis displays, oh, come on, man, displays the time and beneath that the current date on the OLED display. Okay, so I have a C ESP32 C6 with a SSD 1306 OLED display connected to uh, uh, via I2C. I have loaded circuit Python 9 onto the ESP32 C6 and it's ready. Can you create a circuit Python application that displays the time and beneath that the current date uh, on the OLED display? Let's maybe say um, time uh, in the center. Maybe give it a little bit more information. Um, okay. And I'm going to turn on web search so that this specific AI can also go look on the web for more details. I'm going to hit uh, uh, send over there. And it's going to think for a little bit here. And let's see what it comes up with. And it says, okay, you got to load uh, the, the libraries. And because I've done something similar in the past, and let it just finish there. It's going to give me full instructions here, really, what to do. But, um, okay. So what it basically said is load that library, and we've done that, and the display text. Um, all of those things should be on there. Um, so I'm just going to copy this code that it created, and we can see it does a bunch of imports. Then it uh, connects via I2C. It says this display width is 128 by 64. I guess we can change that, and it displays the time, and it goes through a while through. Okay, let's see what that does. I'm going to now go into Thorny, and where is Thorny? Uh, there we go. I'm going to go, and there you can see I've loaded the libraries it asked for already, and I'm going to paste this code in there, and it says peak, board, bus I.O., everything we just saw. I'm going to hit save, so I'm not going to change anything, and I'm going to hit play. And let's see what happens. Oh, not much as, whoops, there's a, a problem already. Say, uh, use root group equals x. So, I get an error here on line 52. Let's see, what's line 52? It says, OLED show. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the AI and I say, it gives me this error. And, you know, that's what I get for trying this out of a, out of a blue. Um, so I'm just telling the AI and I pasted the error that I got. I'm saying, look, I'm, I'm getting this error. What, what, what's up? And it says, oh, okay. And it says, okay, now we have to wait for it to finish again. So just hang in there. Um, and it says something went wrong. You see, hmm, hmm. let's try that one more time. You know, and that, uh, uh, um, this is, um, um, you know, the, the, the type of problem we, we sit with. Um, and it's trying again, um, you know, so fairly new stuff. But so it says, it looks like Circuit Python 9 introduces changes to the object show. So, and it says you should use the group. So I'm just going to copy again the text it gave me, the program it gave me. I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to paste it. I am going to save this. I'm going to hit stop. And I'm going to hit run. 
and aha, well look at that, 11, 10, 49, 25, 03, 26, wow, well, let's make this program just a, a, a little bit simpler, and of course, you can ask it to write anything, so it's now created that for me in the middle of a screen, but let's just do one more thing, I'm going to go into uh, um, the AI here and say, can we make the time display bigger? I'm going to ask it, can we make that, because you know the time at the top is the same size as, as down the bottom, so I'm going to ask it that, and uh, the AI is going to start thinking again. So keep in mind, I, I, I don't, I didn't, not that I knew CircuitPython here, I, I just blindly asked an AI to create me a program to display the date and time on a, a little display like this. And it seems to be, and uh, you know, if you look at the PC here, you can see a resemblance of what I should be seeing, and you can see that, uh, what I should be seeing on this display. So um, the AI is coming back with a result here and um, so in this chat, <coughs> oh, come on, don't error out on me this time, so it came back and it says good, so it says something about changing the font, whatever, I'm just going to copy that, I'm going to go back into my thorny I'm going to select everything, I'm going to paste it, I'm going to save it, oops, I have to, oh, sorry, first I have to stop whatever is running, then I have to, oh, it's not ready yet, it's not ready yet, hang in there, okay, save it, and then hit play, and it has an error on line 7, it says, from Adafruit bitmap font, import bitmap font, okay, now I have to go import that um, uh, um, uh, uh, library, okay? Okay, so uh, on circuit by, uh, um, on GitHub, I'm just going to go there, I'm going to go to releases, um, and uh, here is for uh, circuit Python 9, I'm going to download the zip file, I'm going to open that zip file, I'm going to extract that zip file, I'm going to look inside here and I see there's a lib folder over here, um, and thus, um, let me open Thorny over here, so here we've got a lib folder, okay, so I'm in the lib folder, I'm going to then say, uh, open lib, and I'm in a lib folder, and I'm going to say upload to lib. Okay, so I've now added this uh, Adafruit bitmap font uh, to um, the, um, uh, the device. Okay, so I'm going to hit stop here, I'm back to code, I've now added this library, um, let me hit uh, stop and let me hit play again. And it says, no such file, ah, oh, I need the fonts as well, okay. Okay, so uh, reading this page, or what the AI said, it says you need a fonts folder slash fonts, and you need this file in that folder. Okay, so let me go do a quick search here for that font. Uh, there's a GitHub, and there's a file PDF over here. So how do I get this file? Oh, look at that, that's a font file. I didn't even know what's in a font file. So let's look at raw. There's the file. I can actually see it. There, uh, um, so I am going to, it's in my downloads folder, so I'm going to go back into Thorny, I'm going to go into my Vivian Vanzil downloads folder, 
Um, and let me see, is there a B something file that I just downloaded? What's it called? Um, it's called Arial 16. Okay, Arial 16. Okay, so it should be at the top here. Yeah. Arial 16. There we go. So on here, I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call it fonts, right? So I put this file for me in the fonts folder. Okay, so um, it's uploading that quickly. We can see that's what it said. Make sure that you have a fonts folder and put that file in, in, the, font, in the fonts folder. Okay, and that's what we've done. Okay, so um, if I hit stop over here, let's just go back. Uh, yep, there we go. We're, uh, we have a, uh, a program, and now this time I'm including the fonts. Right, so let's press play this time and see what happens. So it goes, and wow, check that out. This is actually a split display. The first couple of uh, lines is uh, um, yellow and then uh, blue from there onwards. But there we can now see the top display is much bigger than the bottom display. So that again, if we go look in the, this is the, the, the so I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to say, can we move the display to, oh, to just say, um, a bit lower. I wonder what that would do. I have no idea. I've never tried that. So, because I don't like that yellow over there, so I'm going to ask the AI if we can just move a display a little bit lower, or I, I don't know if it would understand what I'm trying to, to do there. So, <clears throat> let's see what the AI comes up with. Again, it's um, giving me the program, and it's going to give me some explanation here of what it did, and it's set to 30 lower. Okay, okay. Um, let's, uh, let's uh, last, let's copy this. I'm going to go back into my thorny. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to save it. And again, I can save it because I first got to stop the running program. Okay. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to hit run. And wow, check it out. Isn't that amazing? The display is now, oh, let me get that. It's a big display, little date below, and that's basically how you can use AI to create almost anything on these um, controllers using, and I'm using CircuitPython, but you could have used MicroPython or, or whatever. The, typically, these AIs understand all these things. So, uh, you know, there's an example of using AI to create a simple little CircuitPython program that runs on here but gives me a display, and uh, you know, if I put this on a battery, uh, I could have a clock, and now, now I can start adding buttons to set alarms or APIs so that, you know, whatever I want. Uh, even talking to MeshTastic, um, I can do a lot of things like that. So just wanted to show you that today. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, until next time, thank you.